Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. In this episode, I want to answer a question that I was asked very recently about how I schedule um, the timing for my film shoots. Now, let me just say right off the bat that how I approach it is probably different uh, than, than is traditional. Um, it might combine some elements of that, but if you're looking for a more traditional way, I would not listen to me. Uh, but, but if you're curious as to my methodology and, and if that works for you, then by all means, you know, give, give it a try. But just want to kind of, kind of put that disclaimer out there, right? Now, before I get into it, I also would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. That way you get all the various episodes and lessons that I put out right when I put them out. Um, thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It means a lot to me. So let's talk about this, right? Uh, you know, number one, it's, it's always kind of very case-specific. You know, generally for me, the, the process always starts with the the macro of things right so meaning if if you're trying to schedule out uh you know an entire film shoot and uh, let me just kind of talk about it in terms of a short film but you know the same you just extract it to to be a feature film as well if you want to apply it to that because it's the same methodology but you know let's say you have a 10 page uh, short film with uh, five scenes, right? And they're not all equal length. Some are like half a page. Some are longer, right? Um, you know, number one, for me, I always look at it of who's av available when. You know, for me, I don't necessarily have the luxury yet of fully dictating, you know, people's time. Um, and so in that sense, I kind of have to work with them and be like, okay, when are you available? So we start with that. And, and then we, you know, we, uh, and I say we because I usually get help from, from somebody else. And what I do is we map out, okay, who's in what scene and where's the crossover? So it's almost like you're kind of, what we, we're really going towards is like a metaphorical Venn diagram of, okay, you know, who are the actors that I need for what scene and how do I, uh, you know, create this and so forth, right? So, you know, on Idol, for example, uh, there was primarily, and I had kind of, I had primarily done this very specifically where it was always gonna, you know, primarily be two actors instead of three or four or whatever. Um, now, of course, there are scenes where there are more than just two actors, but, um, but those were very specific and you know very needed, right? I tried to be as sparse about that as possible. So you kind of lay that out, right? And you and I like to do this um, on the floor of my apartment, like literally index cards uh, and and laying it all out so I can visually see it, right? Because this is even for a, a ten-page short film, this is a lot of information. So I like to kind of lay it all out there. And then I see where, where the crossover is. So then, you know, I start to kind of group it based on, you know, who's available when and what are the scenes. And then once I have that, then I can kind of start to arrange it uh, in a, I can start to arrange the flow. Meaning, for me, I always like to, whenever possible, shoot in order. So if I can go um, within scenes, from you know in order then so be it now not always going to be possible because uh you know it might be like if you go in order let's say you have characters one and two interacting for a lar large section but then you know uh, you have some scenes where it's character one and four then what's character doing when we you know during that time for a couple hours because you know later on they're going to be needed for those scenes as well so then, you know, you start to lump, okay, so if I have character one and two, let's try to go as in order as we can. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll do all the, the, the first scenes first. But then, you know, when we get to that point that, uh, 
that there's, you know, in the script, there's a break from character one and two. Well, we're going to skip that for now. And we're going to continue all the scenes with character one and two. And, uh, and then, you know, once we shoot out character two, we'll keep with character one and, you know, okay, bring in character four and do all those scenes. And we'll, you know, in that sense, right? And that's kind of how I lay it out. Now, once I have the the day to day stuff, you know, um, for me again, because I'm not fully in control of other people's schedules, sometimes how fast or long I can shoot something is based on someone's schedule. Meaning, if they say they have a three hour window, then if, even if I have to shoot, let's say, 15 pages, it's like okay, well that's that's the window of time I have, and I have to shoot 15 pages in three hours, if that's, you know, what I'm going to do. So how the hell did we pull that off? Right? Uh, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. Other times. So in that sense, it would, it would be kind of like reverse engineering. If, if I've got three hours, what are the, what are the, all the shots that I know I need to get to make the scene work the way I, I, I need it to work. And if I can add one or two shots beyond that, great. Um, otherwise, you know, the, the way, you know, if you have the luxury of dictating someone's time in that sense, then you do the opposite. You lay out the shots you want and you kind of map it out. And based off of that, then you're like, okay, I know I can shoot out these uh, 15 pages in, in six hours safely, right? Whatever the case may be. Um, so you really kind of think of it in those terms. And I did an episode a while ago based off of some Gary V advice, which is like seven meeting, seven minute meetings exist, you know, and to open your mind up to short meetings and things like that. And so the reason I bring that up is because, you know, usually, uh, I, I find that people think in at a minimum in increments of five, so five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so forth. And, you know, for me, if I know kind of things, uh, and I know, I know based on past experience, right? So part of this is, you know, it, it, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error on your part. Um, as you get more comfortable, part, part of it can be listening to people who have done this so you can take their expertise. But for me, you know, I kind of lay it out and I'm like, okay, if I'm shooting uh, half a page and it's just straight dialogue and really I need a master and two mediums if that's all I'm going for, uh, you know, how long would that take me? And I kind of think about it. Okay. You know, and granted, you're going to have to kind of account for uh, the idea that someone might flub and so forth. And, and of course, like rehearse and prep. But nonetheless, you know, I, I keep it very tight. Um, some have argued too tight. But for me, it's almost like I, I relish in that, like that, that idea where Someone hits the switch and it's like, go, 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 right? So by keeping it tight, and I've talked about this, it's like uh, Parkinson's loss. Um, time, I'm, I'm going to kind of slightly butcher this, uh, the exact definition in terms of the right verbiage, but the idea is that time either expand, time will either compress or expand depending on your deadline. So if your deadline's two weeks, meaning it's going to take you two weeks to do it. If your deadline's two hours, you'll find a way to get it done in two hours. Uh, so I always, for me, I, I have that in the back of my mind and I've, I, you know, I, I, I seen this to be true, um, in all facets, but, but even in filming. And so I utilize that. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me be tight with this because I know we want to get a lot done. I mean, going into this proof of concept, uh, for my second feature film that I'm doing, there's essentially like 30 shots and and they're all very different. Some have movement and so forth, but we're gonna get these 30 different shots in, in about an eight hour period. And by the way, it would go even faster. Um, I'm, I'm, kind of keep, I'm keeping people, uh, I'm filming people separately. So meaning, you know, even though they might be interacting in, in the same shot, I'm not having them in the same shot because, uh, because of COVID and stuff like that. So, you know, 30 shots, give or take, really becomes more like 45, give or take. Uh, and, and so, 
you know, in that sense, that's a, you know, most people there, if they get 20 shots in a day, they're, they're good. Now, the good news for me, I'm not shooting an action film, although there are some action stuff, but it's not an action film per se. So I have that to my advantage, and obviously that's, you know, that's intended because that, that allows me to be faster. Uh, and I also, you know, much in that way, I think one of the things that benefits me is by being an editor, I know exactly what I need and how to film 100% what I need. So that way I don't, I don't need to get cut. I, I think sometimes, you know, coverage is great. You need coverage. But I think sometimes people overdo coverage for the sake of it. Uh, and then that slows them down. Whereas for me, I'm very specific with how I, what I need and so forth. And even, you know, one of, one of the methods why I don't do a lot of takes is if I'm doing a, if I'm doing, let's say a close up on somebody, I'll do it, you know, usually I'll do two takes. But if someone flubs a line, I just say, stop. We're not going to do the rest of the take. Let's go back a couple of lines. So that way you get a rolling start into it. I'm not just going to pick it up at the line that they flubbed. And let's just do it from there, right? And and so that that is uh, another way that I can serve time. I don't go through entire takes if someone flubs or something like that. And, you know, I don't restart from the start. I just pick up a couple lines back. But yet, you know, I, like for for uh, for this proof of concept that I'm about to do, you know, I just kind of look at it. Okay, what's the action? Well, you know, all the shots really that I'm getting are really like most of them will be five seconds tops, right? And so it's like, okay, uh, you know, I also also like to kind of figure out ways that I can have the camera be in the same position with the same lighting and just knock off multiple shots. So, you know, can I from this position get a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close up? Right, because that speeds up the process. So if I'm in the same position, then then I can go faster and still get the coverage that I need. So how do I do that based off of this one position? Now, for me, as far as the proof of concept, I'm filming it in front of a green screen. So I have the ability to, for me, remain in the same spot uh, for the most part and just turn the actor, right? It really is that wonderful for me. Uh, and so, you know, because it's a lot easier to move them in this particular case than move the camera. And that allows me to not have to reset up often. And so I can get these shots off in five minutes. So even if I did like four or five takes of a particular shot, I can knock out shots in five, seven minutes. Um, so it's, it's, you know, really wonderful in that sense. But this is how kind of I approach it. And so, you know, going back to the idea that I know I have the actors uh, laid out in terms of who's going to be in what scene and the order we're going to film things in. And, you know, I just kind of start creating the shot list and looking at, okay, well, how long do I, you know, how long am I going to give it um, to to film some of this stuff? And And as I said, like, part of it is just very arbitrary, you know? Um, to restrict myself. I mean, it's no different. Like when when Rob Rodriguez made Spy Kids, he just made up an arbitrary budget of thirty five million. Now thirty five million, a lot of money, uh, you know. But nonetheless, for the, the movie he was going for, that is that is nuts, right? And yet he's like, no, I want to restrict myself and be creative. And so you know, let's let's try thirty five, and we'll make it work with thirty five. It just became an arbitrary number that he picked. And so sometimes, you know, for me, it falls down to that in terms of the timing of like, I'll be arbitrary, like, okay, we're going to give ourselves seven minutes to do this one shot. Is it going to take seven minutes? No, but that's what we're going to give ourselves. And, you know, then as I kind of start to see it, you know, the, the, the thing of it is you go through different narrations. So, you, you know, you go through a first draft and you kind of see, okay, where are we at with this? Okay, well, I gave, I gave way too much time for X, Y, and Z, but we know this is like the, the crux of it. This is where it's, you know, these are some of the important shots. The, this is a, a key moment of the movie. So we've got to spend some time on this. So where can we take some time away in the, uh, the earlier stuff that isn't as important and give it to this, right? So, so it becomes a balancing act. And you go through a couple of versions of this till it feels right. And, 
you know, if you're lucky, you go through three versions and you're good. But then, of course, you know, kind of what happens, as always, like, making a film is very organic in that sense. And so, you know, the day or two, especially on, on the indie level, a day or two, one of your actors might be, hey, uh, I, I, I can't come in at nine anymore. I can only come in at ten. So you're like, okay, how do we readjust for this? And even if they can come in at nine, you know, they might be running 15 minutes behind. <laughs> okay, not ideal, certainly, but how do we readjust and so forth? And part of how I, for me, how I do it, I build, build in breaks a little bit longer. So, you know, sometimes I might add like an hour and a half lunch uh, for the sake of, okay, I know that even if I, if we're running behind, I can cut 30 minutes from lunch and still have an hour lunch, something like that. I always try to give people still good breaks and things like that. But um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I do, uh, a key phrase has always been working at the speed of thought. So uh, one of, for me, it works. It doesn't always work for everybody, but um, but I like to compress things and, and almost make it nearly impossible because by, by having very constricted time, I can work more at the speed of thought and we get some beautiful magic. But And part of it is it, 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 it uh, forces people to bring their A game. You know, when they know, because I've seen, I've seen like someone do literally two sentences and it take like an hour and a half. And it's like, for me, I just get bored. It's like, what are we even doing here? You know, um, instead, like, let's say, you know, you, you got five minutes, you got two lines. That's it. Go. That should be way more than enough, in my opinion. So this is my approach to scheduling. I hope this has been beneficial. Feel free to... Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to tell me the ways we're similar, the ways we're different. Um, and yeah, let's let's uh, let's just help each other out. That's what I, ultimately what the purpose of all of this is. Thank you so much. You can uh, comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. Likewise, if you think this might be a benefit to somebody in your life, please share it with them. I certainly would appreciate it. And I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time.